Okay, we're moving up to 167 pounds. John Calling out of Belfort, South Dakota. Sophomore. We'll be taking on Mark Cunningham, the senior from Tulsa. Well, the amazing thing here, Mark Cunningham, right, guys, currently go. ranked number five, is the defending Dang national it. champ. <laughs> and he's picked you, you still you found that amazing when we before we even came on the air. You're asking uh, Ronnie Higdon, how's he ranked fifth? Who's ahead of him? Yeah, I, I mean, it, apparently he, he's had some losses in, in the in the country this year. He's, well, he's had eight losses actually. He's 21 and eight, and uh, those are against guys uh, that are in his division in the NCAA Division Two. I know Central Oklahoma. Uh, these Central guys are some great wrestlers. But you look up and down their lineup, they've got, you know, five, six, seven, eight losses in their record. That's because Central Oklahoma wrestles such a tough schedule. I, I know they got three or four duels against uh, Division I teams. They usually duel uh, Oklahoma State or Oklahoma every year. I know they, they dueled Lehigh this year. Nice takedown by Mark Cunningham. Like I said, he's a national champ defending national champion, although he's defending, he's moved up a weight class. He, he won it last year at 158 pounds, was the runner-up the year before, and was sixth as a freshman. And he's hoping to become one of the uh, four-time All-Americans for the Broncos if he's Dr. able to do it again this year, wants to join his brother, who is also uh, a two-time national champ, so I, I'm sure he doesn't want to let that yep. slip away so his brother would have an edge on him. But... Uh, well, you know, you talked about the Broncos' schedule. Oklahoma, Central Missouri State Open, UNO Open, Oklahoma Open. They were out in the LA, uh, the Las Vegas Invitational. Central Missouri State. We got some blood here on bottom. And you heard Phil Pasali say that uh, they're going to have to take a break because uh, the Mavericks said John Colling is bleeding. Well, this is not a surprise to me. John Colling is a kid. He is just what I call a banger. I mean, he goes out there and leads a lot with his face. And every year, it never yeah. fails. By the end of the year, he's got a big scab on the <laughs> top of his nose because he's in there banging that head around in there. And this happens a lot. It doesn't, like we said earlier, it doesn't uh, cut into his injury time. It's, it's blood. They'll just try to do the best they can to get it stopped. There's the takedown, the early takedown by, by Cunningham, just a basic double leg takedown. And that gives him that two to nothing lead. Uh, we've yeah, got go the time stopped with 202 here in the opening period. And you can see on the bridge of the nose, if you get a chance to look, uh, now he's got his back to us, but calling, as RJ said, the bridge of his nose, and it looks like it's been open more than once. <laughs> so, <laughs> Cunningham, obviously, you got to give him the edge tonight on experience. He's the senior, three time All American. Yep. Johnny Colling, he's, he's a red shirt sophomore. He, he actually started for the Mavericks two years ago at 177 pounds because uh, he couldn't beat out uh, Ralph Kizzy, former national champ for UNO. I can't imagine why. Uh, yeah. So he moved up and wrestled 177 for the Mavericks and then uh, red shirted last year and then got in the lineup at 167 pounds this year. He's an academic All American for the Mavericks. Well, Colling gets a one point escape, so now it's two to one. And we're coming down to about a minute and a half to go in this opening period. The one, go ahead, RJ. The one thing that, that Johnny Colling needs to do is he needs to at least keep this match close because the one thing about Mark Cunningham, he is very tough defensively. If you fall behind him early, it's going to be tough to come back on him. But that's the case with any time you're up on a guy that's a three-time All-American. Well, we've got a stoppage that here. Uh, three, so Cunningham looked over at Phil Pasali. There's something. I don't know if it's his index finger or his middle finger. Actually. Actually, we're switching the blood here now. Oh, okay. Switching Maybe he cut blood. himself. Looks so like yeah. Uh, that won't like take any injury time off him. Hour. He's just yeah. uh, got his finger uh, torn there, and they're gonna uh, they're gonna tape it up real quick. We hope that uh, you enjoyed these li this live broadcast of Division II wrestling, and we'd like to know what you think of this program. You can we're tell us by blood, calling the number on your now. screen: five five four two five one six. Or send email to UNOTV at UNOMaha.edu. Please be sure to check out our website at HTTP www.tv.unomaha.edu. You can tell I'm not real familiar with computer speak. That's a good one. Huh? But 554 uh, 2516, you. you can tell us exactly what you think of the program. And I'll tell you. 
This is a, this has been a good one. I mean, if you're a Maverick fan, obviously you're a little nervous at this point because you're waiting for UNO to kind of start putting some points on the board. They trail on the team right, score 13 go, to 6. And it looks like Cunningham's ready to go. He kind of tore a nail, and we're ready to go again. Like I said, though, uh, you know, the Maverick fans might be a little bit worried, but uh, this isn't a surprise. You know, Central Oklahoma is a little bit tougher in the lower weights. UNO probably expected that. Well, I know uh, this was exactly the same thing that happened last month down in Edmond. Central Oklahoma jumped out early, but UNO had some big wins in those last three matches, two of them by pin, in order to, to pull off that upset down in Edmond. And now what do we have? Two to one score. I'm not sure what uh, David James is upset about, but he he kind of uh, was pleading to Phil Pasali. There you see the time remaining in this period. Two to one lead for Cunningham. Over calling, right time, not a factor. Last time these two met up in Edmond, uh, Mark Cunningham won over calling by about five points, I believe. So a win here by calling would, would be very big for the Mavericks. 20 seconds to go in the period. Now there was a mis there was a, a case where uh, John Colling just got a little too aggressive and and rushed into to Cunningham and Cunningham saw him coming and dropped down on a single leg. No points scored. We got 12 seconds left here in the in the period. I think Colling uh, got a little lucky on that move. You can see it coming. He just rushed and sidestepped by Cunningham and it was almost all over. Well, I talked a little bit earlier. We talked a little bit earlier about the edge points, and right now. By uh, by my calculations, Central Oklahoma has a five to nothing lead on the edge point. So, and and like I said, that's why they're leading the duel. They've they've won the battle of the edge. Yeah, you know, it just amazes me. I, I've been watching Mike Denny, and for years. There you go. And I mean, he never takes his jacket off. He's always standing there with that one hand on his face. But I know he's intense because I've seen some of your practices and. But he just looks you're, so you're, calm and collected. Get on him easy. You really want to see how intense he is. Put the judo geese on. Oh, I know. He's a yeah, third-degree well. black belt, and it gets intense when you do that. He's not so uh, mild-mannered once you do that. He defends the, he defends his title very well when it comes to putting on the judo geese. Well, I think Coach Denny's shown he's an all-around athlete. Um, he, was a, he played football. He was with the old Omaha Mustangs, a semi-pro team. And like you said, he is a third-degree black belt. And he teaches judo at UNO. Three to one, by the way. Uh, Cunningham got a, a point for an escape. Cunningham was warned there for stalling. Uh, Johnny Colling being a little bit more of the aggressor, taking a lot more leg attacks than, than Cunningham. But there now, as I say that, Cunningham gets a great Ooh. double leg takedown. Very impressive. Uh, that's the case. You know, we talked a little earlier about some of these wrestlers being so explosive that, you know, they can turn it on and turn it off. It just makes you wonder, why don't they just leave it on? <laughs> Five to one lead for Cunningham now. And again, Collings going over to the sideline. I guess he's, he's bleeding again. Well, and you see it there, the little gash on his nose. Uh, unfortunately, it's in a spot where they can't really tape it to cover it up. And so basically all they can do is try to put something on it to get it to stop. You see him working on calling. But I'll tell you, Cunningham, that was a great takedown. Here's and, a, and we'll see it here. We're going to see a replay of it here. Nice double leg, great position. Comes in, gets his legs underneath him, lift, and finishes for the two-point takedown. I mean, That's calling, textbook right yeah, there. Yeah, calling was just totally out of I mean, he had no control of the situation. He was at Cunningham's mercy. And you saw him. I mean, he just flipped him over. And Collings in the air, hits the mat, two points, Cunningham. We stand at 5-1 to one with a minute 17 to go in the period, and the Broncos leading the Mavericks 13-6 to six on the scoreboard. Still to come uh, for the Mavericks, Corey Royal, Pat Kelly the third, and Jerry Corner. And uh, although wrestling season is uh, winding down, UNO fans still have the opportunity to show their support. There you get a look at uh, Colorado Mines at Northern Colorado. Yeah, that's a, that's a real easy match. Uh, the, uh, of course, the postseason tournament up at Grand Forks this time. It's always tough to wrestle or play any sport in North Dakota. Oh, Fred, and, and then in the middle of March, the Nationals at Fargo, and I'm assuming that's going to be up in the Dome. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Big time play. And I'll tell you, when the UNO Mavericks, the last time they won the NCAA National Tournament was back in 1991, 
they won it in Fargo. Yes. So we're going back there again this year and, and to see if the Mavericks can do it again. Go back and repeat their last performance up there. But it, that is, like you said, it must be the weather or something because it's a tough place to compete. Well, I always used to tease uh, Sandy Buda and Bob Hanson that there was an NCC rule that no UNO sports team could oh, yes, win in North Dakota. Dakota. That was a rule. <laughs> Five to two the scores, we got a point for an escape, and uh, you saw the action on the far side. But I tell you, you know, you talk about Fargo, North Dakota, you can't help but think of Bucky Mom. Great coach up there for years. He tremendous was tremendous coach for NDSU. A very, very tremendous record he's had. Uh, last time they were down here, as a matter of fact, was just a couple of weeks ago to the duel UNO, and UNO able to pull off a victory there. The funny thing about it, Mike Denny's got one NCAA title. He won it in Fargo. Bucky Mon has one NCAA title. He won it here yeah. in Omaha. Yeah. A great Pick tradition up, up at NDSU. Up. Yeah, you see here, you can hear Pasali yeah. telling them, let's move it. I think uh, half the reason why NDSU is so tough up there is there's just nothing else to do but yeah. wrestle. <laughs> wrestle and snubble, sh you know, shovel, shovel snow. snow. And they've had a bunch of it this year. They go out of bounds with 17 seconds remaining in this period. Five to two leads for Cunningham. He's also got 45 seconds of riding time built up, which isn't a factor at this point, but, but could be later on in the match. Again, like I said, Mark Cunningham, very tough defensively. Uh, you see him just kind of, he's one of these wrestlers that just kind of sits back and waits. And he wants you to come in. He wants you to come to him and make a mistake. And we've seen Colling do that a couple of times. Right. Uh, basically coming in a little over aggressive and then Cunningham or Cunningham uh, capitalizing on that. You know the thing I like about watching Cunningham is the fact that you talk about him being a defensive wrestler and, and there's a there's a way to do that obviously to avoid and not get caught stalling. Right. I mean and that, I think that's 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 a, a skill you acquire. Oh, without a doubt, the years of experience, uh, you can you can uh, learn the tricks of the trade, how to, how to do a little stalling, work the clock a little bit without getting called. Yeah, like no zone defense in the NBA. <laughs> use that, use that top. Not that I would have ever stalled oh, in my no, career. Oh, no, no, I've never, I've never seen that. <laughs> well, no, we've we, got a foreign object we on got the a, mat. What we is got a that? ball, looks like an orange is rolled out on the mat. Or a Nerf ball or something. How'd that get loose? I think Gary Repair left some of his toys out in the, in the field house here. We, minute 39 to go. There you get a really good shot of uh, Collings' nose. Here we go. But Cunningham, as you said, just he's got the lead and he's hung on. It's five to two. You, you notice uh, just by looking at him, appearance-wise, Mark Cunningham looks like a very strong wrestler as well. He's a legger, uh, which is a little surprising because he's not real long. But you see him right there slipping the legs in right away, working that power half, but making, I making things a little uncomfortable for, for Johnny Colling. I was going to mention earlier, though, Cunningham's just, he's tremendous calf strength. I mean, he's got big calves. He, uh, he did, I know he spent, they, the coach has said he spent a lot of time in the weight room over the last couple of years. Like I said, when he first came into right. to Edmond to wrestle for the Broncos, he was wrestling at 150 pounds and has just gradually... Uh, inched his way up uh, over the years, and he has now up to 167 pounds. Again, Collins got to go uh, over to get some work. You're look, taking a look it. right now at Cunningham, and he had a bandage for that uh, torn nail that he got earlier. But Collins on the other side of the mat is uh, uh, taking some opportunity to have his nose looked at. Again, none of this, none of this counts against uh, the wrestlers. And actually, it looks like it must be blood time for, for Cunningham. Cunningham, yeah. At this point, uh, you see, and the reason I say that, you see Phil Pasali standing on that side. If a wrestler does take injury time, the coaches cannot come in and coach him. They can they can come in and assist his injury, but they cannot coach him. Now the other wrestler can go over to his coaches and receive all the coaching in the world. Now, I don't know if, if hopefully Colin was able to get enough coaching to see if he can come up with about three or four quick points here. He trails now five to three, but Cunningham does hold a minute 31 edge in the riding time, so that basically makes it six to three. We got a minute left to go. The calling is a little bit more aggressive, and again, the finger bandage has come off Cunningham. Okay, let's go. And he's just going to throw it away. We'll go without it. Ooh, Cal 
there's Johnny Colling, a, a shot attempt. And again, the defensive wrestling of, of Mark Cunningham again showing there. Marcus. Able to get an easy, Marcus. easy spin around takedown to extend his lead to seven to three. There you see the time remaining in this final period. So Colling's going to have to come up with something major here. And we've got a, uh, a stalemate. stalemate. Easy, guys. Again, like I said, Cunningham real adept at using his legs, tying up Colling. Able to work that clock a little bit. He's got almost two minutes of riding time now, so that's a, that's a for sure point. So his lead now is eight to three. You know, the guys in the heavier weight classes, obviously they know they're going to wrestle later on in the duel. Uh, did you guys basically have some rituals that you went through just to stay ready and stay focused you, while the other matches were you going You do on? a lot of rituals, uh, and, you, you know, you try to get a routine down for every match. Yeah. Uh, you know, you want to do the same thing over and over, whether that means putting your right sock on first, your left right. sock on guys. first. You know, a lot of things play a, have a psychological edge for you. Uh, in the duels, it's not too bad. Uh, you don't have too long to wait. I'll tell you, when it gets really tough is when you're in a big tournament and you got to sit around for hours and hours on end waiting to wrestle. That's when it really starts to wear on you mentally. Uh, the duels, like I said, usually aren't too bad. Plus, the action is so much more, you know, intense and exciting. The final score, 7-4 to four in favor of Mark Cunningham for Central Oklahoma. Another three-point victory for the Broncos that extends their lead to 16 to 6 exactly what I said they got it they had to keep it within 10 for UNO here's the third period takedown that's a third period takedown right there that was a quick move too by Cunningham very quick he like I said he's very tough defensively now we're coming into the meat of the lineup for the Mavericks the crowd knows